I just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies. If you mix brilliance with bravery, that we can ignite something, even this conversation alone can ignite the people. The time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you. Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kelly and we are back again with another video. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and checking out the channel. If you are new, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you are into true crime stories, news, and political commentary, I think you would enjoy and I would very much appreciate you guys. Uh, like the video, comment, whatever you can do. It really does help me out. I thank you in advance. And if you are a returning subscriber or listener of the channel, Thank you so much for being a friend as always, guys. I am very grateful for each and every last one of you that watches the video. So let's get into it, guys. I wanted to come on here and provide um, just a little bit of an update on a case that obviously we have been closely following on this channel, uh, the Idaho 4 murder of the four University of Idaho students back in November of last year that kind of, um, you know, took the whole country by storm. This was a very uh, sensitive case, obviously, for a lot of people. It, it really kind of uh, touched a lot of people, and it just was a horrific thing to imagine. You know, these four college students, very uh, beautiful young people who were just living their life and were brutally murdered in their, you know, college living situation. And it was just, it, it, I mean, it was, it, it was horrific the way that they were killed. And, you know, just thinking that you're safe, being in college, and having to go through something like that. And, it, you know, it just took a lot of people by storm, I think, in that regard, because we've all been through similar experiences. And so you put yourself in the shoes of, of whoever it is that, uh, you know, is, is in the news for whatever reason that they are in you know <laughs> making headlines for and and it's it's hard to imagine something like this happening but there are a few new updates despite the uh current gag order that is in place uh, i did want to bring you guys just those brief updates and then of course the uh trial of leticia stauk whatever however you say that name i still don't really know how to pronounce it but we have some good news guys in that regard so we're going to get into the update and the verdict if you have not already heard about that trial and the um you know the the, the outcome for miss leticia so let's get into it guys we're going to start off with the idaho 4 updates and we're going to get into just a couple of things like i said there's not much there to be updated on but there was a video that was released um to the public just a few days ago, like three or four days ago, and I thought it was pretty interesting. This is a uh, body cam footage of the supposed, the alleged murderer, Brian Koberger. Uh, you know, I don't like to say his name over and over again, but I will for this purpose, and um, it was kind of interesting, guys. I, I thought that this interaction with this police officer, uh, you know, it gives it gives a little glimpse into the type of person and the type of personality that this guy had. And let's just say, it was uh, it was a it was a little bizarre. Okay, so I want to show you guys that interaction um, of the body cam footage. And this was before, like a month before the murders actually happened. This is not the previous body cam footage. Let's just get right on into it guys. And, uh, here we go. All right, y'all. Hey, I'm Officer Langus. Stop saying audio and video recorded. I think, I know, I think you know why I stopped you. You ran the red light. What actually happened was I was stuck in the middle of the intersection. Yeah. So I was, I was behind you the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. So technically you're not supposed to enter the intersection at all for that reason because if the light turns red then you're stuck in the intersection and then you're on the red light so that's the reason i stopped you do you have your license on you yep. do you have the registration and insurance yes. women cops am i right 
You just get this for now. You what? Okay, well, I'm just gonna get this out. First of all, okay. you know, th this is this is what I'm talking about. Like, and this is a minor point, but like, the the, the woman, she has. She has her freaking nails done, okay? She's got what looks like acrylic nails on. Ma'am, I get it. You know, as women, we want to look good. We, we present ourselves a certain way. I get it. Why are you a cop? Why, like, what, I mean, I, I get you might not care if you break a nail, but, like, does that really signify to anyone here that, like, she's, she's going to be getting down and dirty and, like, willing to, uh, you know, like take down a suspect if need be or like just do whatever needs to be i don't to me no you look like someone who should be making me a sandwich or um answering a phone i, I don't know i just it, call me crazy but anyways i'm not gonna get onto this guys y'all know how i feel <laughs> by the way low-key high-key low-key stupid reason to pull someone over So can you, would you explain that to me a little bit further? So in Pennsylvania, when you're stuck mm -hmm. in their intersection, mm -hmm. you have to make a left. So what would, what would the appropriate thing for me to have done? Not, to just, just you're not supposed to block an intersection like that in Washington. So mm -hmm. just by you blocking the intersection, that's technically a ticketable violation. Oh, really? And then thus, then you're running a red light. So it's mm -hmm. another ticketable offense. So you're not supposed to proceed into the intersection until you can go. Because a lot of people do what you just did, right? It's like you're sitting in the intersection yeah. waiting and then turns... And then you're blocking, so. Yeah, there was a little bit of confusion with speeding because someone had stopped. I wasn't sure what they were doing, and then they put on their light to turn. Wow. So I thought that maybe they were letting me go through. Oh. Did you see that? What an no. interesting story. I feel like right before I made the turn, there was someone who like, made a right. And they didn't have their, you know, their signal on, so I wasn't sure if they were just waiting. Mm -hmm. This girl in the background. Yeah, so I just advise, uh, just don't enter the intersection until you can go, so you don't get stuck. Um, let's see. But in that situation, the best thing to do then would be back up. <laughs> not, I don't know if there's a best thing to do in that situation because you're either going to back up into somebody yeah. or you're going to run a red light. So, or, or, you're, gonna be... or you're just going to be able to go ahead and go like and any other person would. And, and uh, a cop's not going to waste everyone's time by pulling you over for simply, you know, uh, going, turning whenever, you know, you have a chance to turn. Even if that light may have already uh, turned red, you're technically past line and you've already started your turn so you know the natural thing is to finish it so yeah this is such an interesting conversation between these two i mean my god i mean how <laughs> how much of a wordsmith and conversationalist are these two right sitting in an intersection there's not really a great option there yeah, yeah mm -hmm. i was just slightly into the crosswalk so oh, wow mm -hmm. you know, yeah where i'm from, from pennsylvania we mm -hmm. actually don't have like crosswalks oh so even if you don't say kind of slightly they have, there's a little bit more leeway as well. Like there oh are a few God, wow. lines. Like there's one white line and there's another one. Mm -hmm. Like there's like a, like a certain yeah. margin from which you can actually kind of put your place your vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, that is so interesting. Yeah. Wow. So I know laws vary state to state, but there is a law yeah. in Washington for blocking an intersection like that, proceeding through when yeah. it, you don't um, when you're just stalling. I forget the actual verbiage. I can find it for you, but it's like stalling, mm. blocking an intersection. Yeah. I'm just curious about uh -huh. the law. I don't mean to. Oh no, yeah, I yeah, can I find it for you. Yeah, yeah. curious. Mm -hmm. Getting there too. Yeah. Um, one second. That looks good. So curious. On a Hyundai. I don't see Pennsylvania registration like at all. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, Expire November 22nd. Or 2022. Wow. Okay. And. Yeah, one of those is actually. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. I'll hand that back to you. I'm just going to go check your info. I'll try to find that uh, RCW, the law for you. And I'll be right back. You Thanks. should right. know it, ma'am. Let's, let's just uh, get it together. Huh? So I'm going to fast forward past this part where she's like um, just in her car by herself. And I'm going to get back to their interaction. So, let me just... Sierra 331, Cut 4 driver. Okay, so I found it. So, I don't know what, in Pennsylvania, the where you go to find laws, but in Washington, it's called the Revised Code of Washington. So, I'll try to turn my brightness up. But, um, it's basically, it's just called an RCW. So, it's RCW 46.61.202. So, it's no driver shall enter an intersection unless there is significant space on the other side of the intersection um to accommodate um so it sounds like you're wrong no driver shall enter an intersection unless there is significant space on the other side like so 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 they can the only the only reason why they wouldn't be able to is if there wasn't significant space but if there is then shouldn't they be able to enter the intersection and then like you just 
I mean, do you even understand the statute? Do, am I, am I um, misinterpreting it? Because it sounds to me like the cop is just doesn't really know what she's talking about. And again, I'm not trying to like take up for this like alleged murderer at all. I'm just saying this irks me, you know, little like, um, unsolicited and just unnecessary traffic stops are like the bane of everyone's existence. Like this is, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here when really like I should be talking about like how weird the alleged murderer is. But I mean, I think that's obvious for everyone to see there he's talking about crosswalks and he's like i mean i think it's kind of based that he's like questioning her about the, the law and being like um bitch do you even know like are you sure do you know why you pulled me over like what's the, you know that's kind of funny but it's like yeah okay <laughs> i don't know this whole interaction is just weird like you guys you know take it somewhere else okay go on a go on a fucking hike and talk about it there because this is this is just boring and i don't think y'all are just kind of like arguing back and forth nobody really knowing what the hell they're talking about it's what it seems like to me i don't know y'all tell me hey the vehicle he is operating without obstructing the passage of other vehicles despite any traffic control signals signal indications for so seats so you had a green light okay. so you're you know thinking what? you can go but you're blocking the intersection yeah. so that's um that's if you're not ever what curious, it said, but any okay. laws in washington uh just revised code of washington um so I'm not writing a ticket or anything like that today. I understand you're from Pennsylvania, but in the future, don't proceed through the intersection. You can't get stopped for that alone um, unless you can clearly just clear it right away. Okay. So, um, right. so that basically, I understand. You're just supposed to wait behind the yeah. the white line. Drivers do it all the time. Um, but it never even occurred to me that that was actually something wrong. But I, yeah. well, except for the fact that I was blocking the mm -hmm. crosswalk. Which is, well, why yeah. don't you kill it? And states vary a lot from laws like Pennsylvania might not even have that law, but in Washington we do. I, I'm actually just from a very rural area. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? So we just don't have crosswalks. Oh, oh here I he goes. An area where there are crosswalks gotcha. And here he goes to the damn crosswalk talk. Yeah. yeah I, I do apologize if mm -hmm. I was asking you too many questions about the yeah. law. I wasn't trying to, like... No, 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 not at all. Like, I understand you're not from here, so... Yeah. Um, if you don't... A lot of people don't know a bunch of laws. Like, I only know it because this is what I do, but... Um, yeah. If you're ever curious on any more laws, just mm. RCW. And they can be hard to read because it's in, like, legal language, but... Um, hope that helps. Yeah, have a good day. Definitely, you too. Thanks. Mm. He doesn't look pleased, ma'am. You might want to watch your bike, okay? Because, yeah, he doesn't look too pleased with you, Miss Lady, ma'am. So, anyways, um, yeah, what do y'all think about that interaction between those two? Excuse me. Between those two, uh, just utter wallflowers. I mean, it's just... It, it, yeah. <laughs> it's funny it's 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 bizarre to see him in like a situation like that where he like in one month it will have been alleged later in the future that he committed like a, a quadruple homicide okay and he seems perfectly normal like it just kind of it's kind of scary and jarring in a way because it's like somebody like that who is capable supposedly allegedly of doing the horrific crimes that he is uh, accused of they're, they're like just normal people living amongst us for the most part you know that you don't see them coming you don't there's no red flags really he seemed perfectly polite for the most part I mean he seemed like just you know I don't know. I mean, you can read things into it now, knowing what we know, but if you had not <laughs> had any prior knowledge to what he is being alleged uh, to, to have done, I feel like most people would think that, like, he was, if anything, like, kind of a, um, just like a simp, almost, like, very docile and kind of a, I don't know, like, beta, beta male energy was is what it was giving me so i don't know interesting uh nonetheless to see so let me know what y'all's thoughts are on that guys and the next thing i wanted to get into y'all might have already heard about this this is like a couple weeks old but there was a, basically a motion to bring in bethany funk who if you guys don't remember she was the other uh surviving roommate of this attack so there were six people in the house when it was alleged that one person, this person here that we see, snuck into the house and murdered four of the six roommates. One of the pers one of the people who was surviving was Dylan, who actually ended up being a witness to seeing him in the house. And the other person was Bethany, who was on the bottom level floor 
who it did not really state had much involvement in regards to uh, witnessing anything or uh, having any sort of interaction in the way that Dylan did. So this information that came out recently was interesting to me. So I want to get into um, some things that I missed apparently in the affidavit. Uh, this was brought up because of the request from the defense counsel to interview Bethany now stating that she might have exculpatory evidence that would preclude their client from the basically from the crime who would basically eliminate him as a suspect which I found to be quite fascinating as it turns out a lot of uh, lawyers and people that I have gone on to kind of um, listen to their take and their point of view have said that this could be just you know a, a smoke screen a lot of times this will happen they will say something is exculpatory when really it is uh, meaningless to anyone but the defense counsel and it's just a way for them to kind of spin the narrative as they are paid to do so but i still found it interesting because this affidavit came out i did a whole video on it which i will link uh the playlist for the uh, idaho for case in the uh at the end of the video and if you guys want to check that out and catch up or whatever on all of the uh case details like i, I went over i made s multiple videos so check that out if you want to but um i went over in one specific video the entire affidavit and there are still things that i obviously like completely missed that are are pertinent now so i wanted to just read uh this article is from um newsweek what bethany funk told the police in regards to the case okay so uh, let's just go over this guys later on in the affidavit the moscow police department said that on november 12th the night before the murders chavin and carnodal were seen by funk at a fraternity house from approximately 9 p.m on november 12th to 1:45 a.m on november 13th and Bethany Funk also estimated that at approximately 1.45, Chapin and Carnodal returned to the King Road residence and also stated that Chapin did not live in the King Road residence but was a guest of Carnodal. So right off the bat, the, it does, the, the timeline here makes no sense. And it's, it's, it's not correlating with what I specifically remember being stated, which I... I I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that it, I had read and it was stated in multiple sources that Bethany was home at like 1 a.m. Okay, Bethany and Dylan were supposedly the first ones home in the house, followed by uh, supposedly Ethan and Zana, and then followed by Kaylee and uh, Maddie at about, what was it, like to shortly after two like between two and two thirty they were the last ones to arrive back at the home and then everyone was supposedly in their respective quarters by like 4 a.m so how would bethany if she was at the residence at 1 a.m be able to testify of seeing them at the party till 1 45 and then if even if that reporting that initial reporting of her being home at 1 a.m was not correct or it was something that i miss understanding or misremembering how is it that she was able to testify that they were in two places at one time like they were at the party which obviously yes the like the fraternity house where they were having the party was very close to the residence but it didn't say that they all left together it says that she testified or she was able to um say that they were seen at the fraternity house at 145 and then also stated that they were at the home on King Road at 145. So that, that to me is sloppy and that doesn't make any sense. And I went back and double checked this against the actual affidavit because I was like, well, how, is this really like pulled straight from the affidavit? Like, is this what was actually listed? Because it, that to me kind of set off a red flag, rereading it like now in this, in this present moment. Back then it was kind of something I, I must've glazed over because there was a lot of details in that affidavit and there was a lot more significant uh, pieces than, than this, but this kind of jumped out at me. So it also, the affidavit, affidavit also stated that Funk and Mortensen both informed police that the other occupants of the uh, King Road residence returned home on November 13th at around 2 a.m. local time and were asleep or at least in their rooms by approximately 4 a.m. 
The final mention of Funk in the affidavit states that police reviewed forensic downloads from her phone and determined that the homicide occurred between 4 a.m. and 4.25. This was something else that I must have just glazed over uh, because that's a pretty important detail. Uh, I mean, it's basically helping to establish the timeline of the murders because they used supposedly um, Bethany, I mean, sorry, I'm sorry, Dylan's eyewitness account and her timeline to establish, you know, part of it. And then the other part was using Bethany's forensic phone data. What exactly does that mean? And what does that data show? How is it that y'all were able to use that to establish the murder timeline? That part is interesting because even if she was awake and using her phone at that time, if she didn't hear anything, didn't see anything, how would the phone records have anything to do with anything? So to me, reading this now, it kind of alludes to the fact that, did she hear something? Does, did she see something? Were her and Dylan texting back and forth? What exactly were they able to pull from those phone records that would have anything to do with the timeline of the murder and have anything to do with establishing that, that timeline? Like, what exactly did those records say? So that is something that I am very much interested in, and I hope that this is something that we will be able to learn because uh, it that screams to me that she heard something, that possibly her and Dylan both heard something. Maybe they had a discussion about it. Maybe she tried to text the other roommates. Maybe she texted someone else outside the home. I don't know. Something in there is not making sense and it's not adding up so what do y'all make of that um guys let me know in the comments um yeah I, th I found it to be interesting and the last thing i will show you guys in regards to this case is this article surviving roommate in idaho murder agrees to speak to brian koberger's attorney so it was said that they were possibly going to be calling her as a witness at the preliminary hearing which if you guys don't remember, is coming up in June. They were possibly going to call her if she didn't agree to uh, an interview, basically, with the defense. And there was, uh, you know, a time where she was actually fighting it with her attorneys, basically saying she didn't not, she didn't want to sit with them and do an, any any kind of interview. Basically, you know, saying telling them to f off, but. I think once it was presented to her that if she did not provide some sort of statement to them that she would have to then testify at the preliminary hearing, which would be under oath and it would be more of a formal setting. I think that's when her and her lawyers decided that, okay, she's going to give a statement and this would just be basically a statement. I don't even think it's like a formal deposition. It's just basically an interview with the defense counsel and I'm sure her lawyers and it, it, they'll be able to ask her whatever questions that they feel might lead to this supposed exculpatory evidence that they think Bethany has. So I haven't heard anything else since it was announced that she would talk to the defense counsel. So I don't know if anything came to that. If maybe there was, uh, that was a dead end lead that they ran into after speaking with her. I don't even know if the meeting happened. Like I said, there's a gag order in place, but we'll see guys. And like I was saying before, the preliminary hearing was supposed to be in June and it is supposed to be in June. We haven't heard anything different, but I have heard rumors. Okay. Unconfirmed, but Nonetheless, that they could be the prosecution convening a grand jury on this case. And this would basically eliminate the need for a preliminary, preliminary hearing, which if you guys aren't aware or uh, familiar with the differences, you know, it's, I wasn't either until recently, but basically a grand jury is the prosecution uh, basically presenting their entire case to a impaneled grand jury who pretty much only hears that side or not pretty much they do only hear the side of the state and then they decide whether or not they're going to indict on charges or not so this tends to be more of a surefire way of indictment and the preliminary hearing is is both sides would present basically the case that they have thus far and present you know evidence could be a witness is called you know, all, all, of the, all of the things that you would see in a normal trial. And then 
an indictment would either follow or not after after that hearing so that's more of a risk whereas a grand jury hearing is more of a surefire indictment um you know against whoever it is that you're pursuing charges against so i have heard rumblings that they are going to convene a grand jury ahead of this preliminary hearing and that we might not even see what we were initially promised to see in june so that's to be decided yet we don't know what's going to happen i am hoping for a preliminary hearing because i want to see what the f is going on and you know we've been kind of like this case has been suffocated when it comes to information getting out because of the gag order that has been in place and all of the um you know just me measures that they have taken to kind of make sure no one really talks about this case it seems like there's been a lot of protection going on for this alleged murderer you know they've been like telling saying that he's gonna his vegan diet's gonna be respected in jail just a whole lot of concessions and, and things that just don't really sit well with a lot of people so we'll see guys what do y'all think is gonna happen do y'all think they'll have the preliminary hearing or do y'all think they'll just do the grand jury um let me know in the comments for sure i would love to know your thoughts and Okay, guys. Now we're gonna shift gears, and we're gonna get a, we're gonna get into a guilty ass hoe. Okay. The verdict was just brought back from the jury on yesterday, on Monday, and let's see what they found in regards to Letitia Stouck, the evil stepmother who was accused of killing her stepson. Uh, rest in peace to little Gannon. Let's see what the jury decided. Because there's some extra writing on here, but I think I understand what's going on. So um, with respect to count number one, charge of murder in the first degree after deliberation, we, the jury, find the defendant, Letitia Stauk, guilty of count number one, murder in the first Thank degree God. after deliberation. With respect to count number two, charge of murder in the first degree, child under 12 by a person in a position of, tw of trust, we, the jury, find the defendant, Letitia Stauk, guilty of count number two, murder in the You're first done, degree, bitch. child under 12, position of trust. Evil, with respect evil. to count number three, uh, charge of tampering with a deceased human body, we, the jury, find the defendant, Letitia Stauk, guilty of count number three, tampering with a deceased human body. With respect to count number four, <coughs> charge of tampering with physical evidence, we, the jury, find the defendant, Letitia Stauk, guilty of count number four, tampering with physical evidence. Um, I wanted to ask the jury, uh, or actually the foreperson, there is some extra writing on here with respect to uh, question number one. There's a cross through and some initials. And then on part B, there's also a cross through with initials. Was that signifying that you were not answering that and you intended to answer guilty as to that charge? Yes, sir. All right. And uh, is that what you intended um, with shouldn't all? Shouldn't you have like figured that out before you read the verdict? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. They crossed something out. You think that you would uh, clarify that before the verdict gets read out for somebody being um, found guilty on first degree murder? But I don't know. That's just me. Anyways, very, very satisfied, obviously, with the decision of the jury to find her guilty on all charges. You're not insane. I mean, you are insane. Letitia, but you were never criminally insane. You were never without your uh, faculties and your, you know, sensibilities. You were never out of your mind in regards to this horrific crime that you did. You knew what you were doing the entire time. You tried to cover it up. You took so many insane measures that were presented, laid out in court of law. You know, you involved your teenage daughter in ways that were just like out of this world. You drove across country to dump the body of your 11 year old stepson in order to hide your criminality. First you dumped him somewhere locally, okay? Then you moved his body about four damn times, okay? The lies that were told, the phone calls, the gaslighting, the interview with the with the back to the camera, the fake de I mean the fake uh, lie detector company test. It was a complete and utter shit show, and you're going to jail for the rest of your life. And I cannot think of anyone more deserving than Letitia Stout. Okay, this woman is 
the definition of evil. She is the definition of someone who is a narcissist and would go to the ends of the earth to protect herself and for her own self-interests. There are no limits to what she will and won't do. So, thank God this jury came back with the correct decision. And uh, let's get into now some of the reactions. We're going to get into the reaction, just part of it, of Gannon's mother and Gannon's father. And then I want to play for you guys a few clips from the judge's statements because... You know, he, he really told her about herself, and it's something that we all need to hear, you know, in regards to this despicable woman. So, let's first start off with um, Landon, who is Gannon's actual mother. So, let's get into this. You search, She searched so hard for love, when all along she had it, but she took it for granted. I didn't hold anger against you then. I still kept my heart open to her. She had so, you had so much love from Lena and Gannon, from Carly, her own daughter, that you willingly, you willingly subjected to the chance of serving time for her crimes. Such an indicator of her inability to love anyone herself. You had support, appreciation for me, even when we couldn't see eye to eye, because I valued her for helping, helping me with our children when I physically couldn't. Even when I was fighting for my kids, as you wrote a false smear campaign against me and my children, and also Al, for me, I still appreciated that they were loved by you. So I thought. She had everyone fooled. She pro projected abuse and addiction claims against all of us, not just me, when all along she was the one harming innocent children. Anything to take the light off. Manipulating us breaking my kids, and murdering my son. Mm. Very well said. I mean, obviously it's emotional for her, so she is uh, very, you know, emotional in her testimony, but, I mean, just, <laughs> I couldn't imagine being in the place of this mother either. I mean, imagine having to have your, your kids removed from your custody for whatever reason, you know, you're going through personal issues, you are, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be, I don't exactly know, nor does it really matter at this point. I mean, he had a father that was willing and able to take him into his own custody, and his wife, who he thought was a normal, decent person, turned out to be a psychopathic uh, Letitia Stauk, but that's neither here nor there, you know. The, the, the things that this woman did to this other woman's child after having her trust put into this other woman because she had no other choice. Her kids were uh, taken from her and she was not able to, to care for them at that moment. And it, it was an ultimate betrayal. And she spoke on how Letitia just had no regard for her own daughter. You know, involving her in the the like aftermath of, of this whole debacle obviously I, I don't believe now you know after seeing everything that her daughter actually had any knowledge whatsoever of what was really going on but just bringing her along for the ride to florida where she dumped the body you know involving herself and her daughter in the like you know, aftermath of, like, the police coming by, like, she was using her daughter as, like, a, a, a go-between, like, a spy, you know, just completely manipulating this girl to no ends, like, for what reason? For her own selfish gain, instead of protecting her own daughter, like any normal woman would do, she just used her, and she, I, I love that Gannon's mother actually called that out, because, that really cannot be understated. So let's get into now um, Al Stouk's, uh, a few of his statements. And, and I mean, I'm going to be honest. He read her the F down. Okay. It was, I mean, he hurt my feelings. So let's get into some of these comments, guys. This part, because I don't want to make this any more about me. I'm not seeking any restitution, Your Honor. For the dollar fifty a month I received from the defendant, Tisha, would just keep me connected to her for the rest of my life, and I don't want that. So, absolutely no restitution, Your Honor. The murderer of which I speak was not always such. Mm. When I met Tisha, she was beautiful, extremely intelligent, as many have testified to, and a seemingly successful woman. 
A far cry from the nappy-headed, murderous, <laughs> narcissistic, and arrogantly oh flippant human being oh that sits in our midst today. Ooh. Having a background in teaching, social work, Ooh. higher education, certified babysitting, and endless amount of credentials, <laughs> that should render one trustworthy when it relates to the safety of children. However, although, the although she remains too much a coward to state the facts of what she did to Gannon, too much a lily-livered, self-centered, pathological oh liar to ask for forgiveness, Hello? and too much the facade of one who actually cares for others to have taken her frustration out on an adult oh. or one who could defend themselves, mm. she will one day give an account through her words or through her time. <laughs> Singing pictures of Gannon sleeping to Landon and I was telling, as the boy looked pale and absent of the energy that so defined him, this is what a happy, healthy little boy looks like when he's sleeping in the next picture. Oh my god. Okay. That's what. Oh. Good lord. Oh. All right. Well, I mean, there... I see no lie. I see no lie. And she is a nappy headed hoe, or whatever he said. I mean, just like it's good. Yeah, good on you. Call it out. Call it how we see it. Ma'am, you look unbathed. You look unkempt. You know, obviously, your life is over, so yeah, I don't yeah, I don't blame you. You know, there's no one to look good for. Your husband is now remarried to another woman. Uh, you know, he, it's done for you. You're just done. The most you can hope for is some lesbian action in prison. You know, but even then, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how kindly they're going to take to a uh, child killer. I, I don't know. Good luck to you, though, ma'am. But he absolutely read her for filth, and it needed to be done. Someone needed to do it, you know? He rubbed her face in it just as he should have. This was someone who he married, someone who he trusted with his kids, who, you know, obviously, there's ultimate betrayal on him as well. But even more so than a betrayal felt by Landon, Gannon's mother, this was somebody he was married to. I mean, my God, I can imagine the type of <laughs> trust issue someone would have after after going through that ordeal and the type of trauma and just utter i mean uh, like <laughs> i don't even know the the emotions that somebody would go through after after dealing with that is just beyond anything that i can imagine at this point so it needed to be done and thank god he did it he read her for filth just as he should have so let's now get into the last part guys this is some of the judges comments which were also very good uh i have just a few clips that i want to play for you guys so let's start with this first one and he also did a very good job of this is more of like a uh, like a like a polite read this was like you know very backhanded um okay let's get into this young woman that trusted you to put her interests above yours this is a young woman who believed in you and believed you were innocent of this crime right up until the time that you pled not guilty by reason of insanity. And he's talking about her daughter in this clip. Sorry. And she still loves you. That's natural for a child and it doesn't matter how much older they get. You were supposed to protect her. I cannot imagine the guilt she feels or the therapy that she will need to address your betrayal. Mm. There is mm. no evidence that she had anything to do with the murder or your cover-up of it. But some people still think that she is somehow involved. She wasn't. The incredible strength of will and courage that it took for her to come in and testify is amazing to me. But she did it because, as she said, it was the right thing to do. And while thankfully she didn't testify, let's not forget about Lena. You betrayed her too. You took her brother from her and forever altered her family dynamics. She will always wonder who she can trust and will always feel that loss. She was there the day you killed Gannon. His body was still in the house when she got back from school. At some point, you even claimed this eight-year-old girl helped you move her brother's body from the basement to the back of your car. That's just simply not true. As she gets older, Lena is going to want to know more, and she's going to want to know if there was something that she could have done to prevent this. I hope she comes to realize that she has no fault in all of this. Wow. Uh, see, that part I hadn't heard. So, in one of her many different tall tales that she told, apparently, she, somewhere along the line, said that Lana, the little girl who was younger than Gavin, I believe she was like eight or nine, helped to move his body from the house to the car. 
I mean, what kind of a sick fuck do you have to be to not only involve your own daughter, but then you, you try to involve and loop into your disgusting lies and your disgusting crimes this other child? I mean, she's diabolical. She, she really is. She's one of the worst humans ever. I mean, ever. Her and Casey Anthony are running a tight-ass race, okay? I don't know who is going to win the gold, but, the you know, we'll see. Stay tuned, kids. Anyways, let's go to the next clip. I understand the claim of disassoci dissociative identity disorder. I have seen something resembling that, and I have seen defendants with schizophrenic disorders. I can understand those. What I have seen is that the mental condition causes the person to act a certain way, and when they realize what they did, they are astonished by what happened, or they have no memory of what happened. Your claim is that it was another personality that murdered Gannon, but there is no time during the minutes, hours, and days following the murder where Letitia came out and wondered, gee, why am I carrying a body around in my luggage? <laughs> that just isn't credible. <laughs> you knew what you were doing. You made a number of clear and conscious decisions to cover or disguise mm -hmm. what you had done. Claiming a lack of motive is a common defense tactic, and it can be a sound strategy. The truth is, however, that it only takes a moment to make a bad decision that results in disastrous consequences. And oftentimes, we never know why a defendant chose a particular course of action. However, that does not mean that they did not intend to undertake a course of action. Sometimes, as in this case, the likely explanation is anger. An 11-year-old boy with burns, who feels that he's not being taken care of. Mm. An 11 year old boy on the verge of being a teenager. Those of us who have lived through people or kids with, that were teenagers, we know how that is. It is not hard to imagine Gannon saying something, you're not my mom. I want my mom, I want my dad. And that would be enough to make you really angry. So sad guys. I mean, y'all like, remember back to like the audio that was played in court of Gannon basically crying, upset, completely distraught over what his then evil stepmother was accusing him of doing, uh, starting the supposed fire, spilling whatever, the, the candle wax, and all he was, you know, trying to basically express was that he was worried about his, his burns, which now we will never really know what the extent of that was or how that came to be because this woman is a compulsive and diabolical liar. And it just really, you know, his statements really cut to the it really cut to the core of it because it's like she tried to also say in one of the phone calls that we listened to in one of the videos, you know, she was trying to gaslight Al Stalk by saying, you know, like, why would I kill Gannon? People, people plan these sorts of things. People, you know, don't just kill for no reason. And, and, you know, this, this kind of thing takes planning and why would I do it? And blah, 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 blah. You know, and I said, and, and I agree with what the judge just said now that's bullshit okay you don't have to plan anything all it takes is a moment of rage and the ability to be an evil ass woman person whoever you are i mean not to say that anybody's capable of murder but it's like no people do it every single day okay people snap people have issues that lead to you know, the, it, something in their personality being capable of doing something like this to someone else. And what we come to find out is, is this woman was capable of many horrific things. And she did those things willingly and with apparent ease, including killing her stepson, implicating her own daughter, completely gaslighting and lying to her husband of multiple years and not really seeming like she has any remorse or regret or any kind of feeling towards any of those <laughs> horrific incident or horrific uh, things that she did perpetrated against people that she supposedly loved and who loved her. I mean, she just, it was like no skin off of her back whatsoever. Truly, truly diabolical and, I mean... I impressive in a way. The level of narcissism, the level of sociopathy that is present in this disgusting and vile woman so the last thing we're going to see is him basically sentencing her to the time that she is given once she's found guilty by this jury so let's get into that and then we'll wrap it up guys the facts in this case are the most horrific i have ever seen 
Your conduct in this case deserves the maximum punishment that I can Amen. impose under Colorado law. As such, with respect to the charge of first-degree murder after deliberation, I remand you to the custody of the Colorado Department of Corrections for the remainder of your life with no possibility of parole. With respect to the charge of murder in the first degree of a child under 12 by a person in a position of trust, I remand you to the custody of the Colorado Department of Corrections for the remainder of your life with no possibility of parole. Those two sentences will merge. If you have questions about that, you can ask your attorneys. With respect to the charge of tampering with a deceased human body, I'm also going to sentence you to 12 years, followed by a three-year period of parole. That sentence is to be consecutive to the life sentences that I've already imposed. With respect to tampering with physical evidence, I'm going to impose an 18-month sentence. That sentence is also consecutive uh, to, the murder char to the sentences for the murder charges that I have imposed. I also understand, with the consent of the prosecution, and I'm assuming no objection from the defense, that I will dismiss all the charges in 20 CR 3170. Close that out. Subject yeah, anyways, in, in other words, get her out of here. Bailiff, please remove the defendant. Put her in handcuffs, shackle her up, hog tie her if you need to. Let's get her out of here, get her back into her new home, and, and you know, uh, an eight by eight or whatever the size of the cell is, and let's stick her in there and let's forget about her because she is uh, human scum. Honestly, she is vile, and she is just—I mean, a despicable human being and. She really deserves everything that is coming to her, including spending the rest of her life behind bars. Knowing her, she'll probably try to escape at some point, as she has already tried to do. But, you know, we just got to keep a watchful eye on this one, okay? Everybody, look out of your peripheral. Watch your backs. You know, she's a slippery little snake, okay? She's a, she's, a, she's very foxy, very, very, um, you know, stealthy. Let's watch her. Let's keep let's keep our eyes open. Okay, keep 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 them peeled. Okay, because this one, she is no good. Okay, so what do y'all think about the jury uh, jury's decision? Obviously, I think we're all. <laughs> uh, it was kind of a duh moment, but there was some you know people that thought she there was a chance for her being found criminally insane. I thought there was no way. I mean, somebody who has had a mental break. You know, let's think Andrea Yates. Let's think people like that. They don't go and, like, try to cover up their crimes after they have done something as horrific as that. You know, it's it's an actual mental disorder that is, is real. And I might actually do uh, a video on Andrea Yates soon just so we can kind of have a comparison. But this is not what this was. This woman was pure evil, and I, I'm totally satisfied. I, like I said, there's no one who deserves to be found guilty of murder and sentenced to a life behind bars more than Latish. Okay. But let me know. What do y'all think, guys? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. Please like the video if you guys liked it. And let me know what y'all think also about the Idaho 4 case and the updates there. Do y'all think there's going to be a preliminary hearing or a grand jury? And don't forget to subscribe to the channel on the way out, guys. Follow me on Twitter. I thank you so very much and yeah until next time guys i will uh, see y'all later okay bye i just tell the truth and telling the truth is crazy in a world full of lies if you mix brilliance with bravery that we can ignite something even this conversation alone can ignite the people the time is now to express and for people to believe in themselves. The time is now for it to be okay to be great. People in this world shun people for being great, for being a bright color, for standing out. But the time is now to be okay to be the greatest you.